In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to restore an implant restoration from impression to crown fabrication. So on the left, we have the impression coping, and on the right is the implant analog, and we call it an analog because it's analogous to the implant, or it mimics the implant. So you can see on the left, the impression coping has a hex, and it inserts into the analog. Now the first clinical step will be to remove the healing abutment from the implant. So what you want to do is place a throat pack to catch anything that may fall in the back of the throat and you're going to use your driver to unscrew the healing abutment. Once the healing abutment is removed you can use chlorhexidine to irrigate the implant to clean anything that may be uh, trapped inside the threaded portion of the implant. Now the next step is to seat the impression coping and the impression coping has a hex at the bottom of it which will engage with the internal part of the implant. Once you think you have it seated down into the implant fully, what you want to do is gently rotate the impression coping to make sure that the hexes are engaged. The anti-rotation component will tell you if it's seated down all the way. Now you want to tighten the implant um, with the driver and it's got a screw on the inside and give it a good tighten to make sure that it's seated. The next step is to confirm the seat of the impression coping onto the implant with the radiograph. So once the seat is confirmed, you're going to cover the screw hole with orthowax and you're going to use medium body PVS to syringe around the impression coping and some of the adjacent teeth. You're also going to use medium body PVS into the tray and you're going to seat that tray like you would any other crown and bridge impression. Now after the material is set, you're going to remove the impression from the mouth like you would any other crown and bridge impression and you're also going to unscrew the impression coping from the implant and replace the healing abutment. So at this stage, once everything is out of the mouth, you want to reattach the impression coping now onto the implant analog. And remember the implant analog is intended to mimic the implant in our master cast. So you tighten that together. And what you want to do is in the Zimmer impression coping, it's got three sides to it. So it's triangular in shape. And you want to insert that in back into the impression in the same orientation. So you line up the three sides and you push down until it seats all the way. And you're checking for the implant analog stability. You don't want it to rock a lot. You're also looking at the occlusal surfaces and the sizal uh, lingual um, surfaces of the adjacent teeth to make sure that you're able to articulate this master cast appropriately uh, with the opposing arch. So you can see the implant analog sticking out of the impression, which would mimic the implant position. Now at this stage, you want to paint the uh, implant area with Vaseline because when we add our soft tissue moulage, you don't want that to stick to the actual impression itself. You want to be able to separate that. So this soft tissue uh, moulage is made out of PVS and you want to syringe it around so that you are at least above the junction of the implant coping from the implant analog. And once the material is set, you want to use a blade to trim off the excess. You don't want it to cover the adjacent teeth. So at this point, you're going to pour the impression with Dysone, just like any other impression. And you can see that it's important to have the impression uh, analog and coping firmly in the impression uh, with enough material surrounding it so it's not vibrating a lot uh, during the pour. Once the stone is set, you'll be able to separate it and you can see that the impression coping is still in the cast um, and you can see the soft tissue moulage that's embedded into the uh, stone cast. The soft tissue acts uh, to simulate the, the soft tissue contours and it's important um, to be able to remove it so that we can confirm the seat of any components that go onto the implant. So what's being seated onto the analog right now is what we call a UCLA abutment. And it's uh, got a plastic sleeve on it that we can wax up to the contour of the crown that we would like 
um, to fabricate. So we'll be able to tighten that and we'll be able to see um, that it is seated all the way. And it's important, otherwise our occlusion will be incorrect if our crown is fabricated off of an unseated or not fully seated UCLA. So you'll give that to the lab. They'll be able to wax up um, to the shape of the uh, crown with a cutback. And then this wax pattern gets uh, casted into metal. And then once it's casted into metal, um, porcelain will be stacked onto it uh, to get us a PFM. In this case, it's a screw-retained porcelain fused metal crown.